Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Distance Learning. And as always, we're going to ground ourselves in God's Word and uh, remind ourselves of our identity, purpose, and action. Who are we? We're children of God, loved and saved by Jesus. What is our purpose? To make God known through serving leadership. And how do we do this? We love God and we love others. <clears throat> as you all know, we've been working through the big picture of God's love for us in Jesus. And today we come to the end of the Bible, um, the book of Revelation. It's called Revelation. It's singular, not plural, like Revelations. It's Revelation. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ. And so this whole book is telling us that Jesus is in control. And uh, it talks about the end of the world and how Jesus will make everything new. Uh, and it uses a lot of imagery. So sometimes it's a very difficult book for people to read. But the bottom line is it says Jesus is coming back again. He's going to make everything new, including you and me, everything new. And uh, there will be no more sin, no more death, no more devil. And that is really good news. Uh, if you look at the, the passage in Revelation 22, 3, this is the last chapter of the book, the whole Bible. It says, no longer will there be any curse. Notice that word curse again. It started in Genesis 3 when Adam and Eve sinned and God put a curse on everything. And the whole big picture is about how God is going to fix the curse. We know that he sent Jesus and Jesus on the cross became the curse for us. He rose from the dead on Easter to start everything new and make everything new. And now here is the point where Jesus comes back to earth and recreates everything. Everything's new. But it goes on to say the throne of God and of the Lamb, and that's Jesus, will be in the city and his servants will serve him. Bottom line is, at the end, there is no more curse. And that's wonderful news for you and for me and for the whole world. <clears throat> in fact, Paul says, in one of his letters in Romans, he says the whole creation is waiting for that day uh, because it's going to be a wonderful thing. All right. Um, if you look at this picture now, this comes uh, from a painting in the Sistine Chapel in Rome. It's a famous chapel, and it was painted by a famous person named Michelangelo. Maybe you've studied him before. Uh, Michelangelo was uh, asked to paint the Sistine Chapel, and his response was, well, actually, I do. I'm a sculptor. I uh, do do uh, carvings of people. I don't do paintings. And yet, God, through the gifts that He gave Michelangelo, painted the big picture all through the Sistine Chapel. And this painting, if you go in there, is actually up on the wall over uh, the altar. And it's the end of the story, if you will, when Jesus returns. Yes, this is a picture of Jesus. <clears throat> now. For those of you who have seen a lot of pictures of Jesus, this one doesn't look much like those other pictures, does it? Um, usually when we see Jesus, what does he have on his face? That's right, he usually has a beard. And usually Jesus is kind of a skinny guy. He doesn't look so big like this guy. I mean, this guy's got huge biceps and he's got a six-pack. I mean, he, he looks like a football player, right? So what is going on? Why did Michelangelo decide to paint Jesus this way? We can hardly even recognize him. Well, maybe you can think back to the beginning of the big picture. We started in the beginning, and God created a specific person. He created Adam. Let me refresh your memory for you. Remember that picture? That's God creating Adam. And this is the same Michelangelo who painted this painting on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel and then continued to paint the fall into sin and the whole big picture until we get back to this picture of Jesus. Now, you can see that this picture looks a lot like Adam. And that's the message that Michelangelo was trying to share with us is that Jesus is the second Adam. Whereas the first person, the first Adam, sinned, and because of that there was a curse, and because of that you and I are sinners, and because of that uh, we're, we live in a broken world, Jesus is the second Adam. When he rose from the grave, he started everything new. And through baptism, we're linked into a new community of Jesus' people, if you will, God's children. And so we are connected to the second Adam. And so his perfect life becomes our perfect life. And his um, 
perfect body becomes the future of our perfect body and our hope. Boys and girls, because of Jesus, we too will be made new someday and there will be no more curse. And that's our hope. <clears throat> and our hope isn't just, I hope I win or I hope I win this pro contest or that contest. Our hope is a sure and certain thing right now in the present. We know it's going to happen. And the reason we know it's going to happen is because of the things in the past. Jesus said he was going to die on the cross. He did. Jesus said he was going to rise from the dead. He did. God always does what he says. And Jesus said that he is going to return and he is going to make everything new. And so we know it's going to happen. And we know it's certain. But we wait for it. And that's why it's hope. It's still unseen. We're not experiencing it yet. That's the big picture. From the beginning and the curse to the fall, to Jesus becoming the curse for us, fixing it all, and then at the end, he returns and everything is made new. And notice how over 14, 1,500 years, 66 books are written by many different people, and they all tell the same story. It's all woven together to give us the big picture of God's immeasurable love for us in Jesus. But I want to follow up on this idea of everything being new because as you read the New Testament, people like Paul and others, they help us to kind of cope with the life we're living in. And I describe it, as others have described it, as a now, not yet kind of existence. Now there's certain realities, but we don't see them fully yet. That's the hope. Okay. So in 1 Corinthians, Paul says, now we see as in a poor reflection then we will see fully. Now we know in part, then we will know fully, even as we are fully known. And to illustrate this point, uh, take a look at this uh, photo of a lake. Um, can, you, can you look in, in the reflection and tell me anything about what's going on? Maybe as you look in the reflection, you notice the, the shadows of uh, certain objects. You can almost make them out. They're trees, right? And you, you see the sunlight reflecting in the water. Um, it's either a sunrise or a sunset. So even though we can't see the sun, we know the sun is rising or setting. Even though we can't see the trees, we know they're there. It's not perfect. It's, 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 it's like a reflection of it. It's not clear. Okay. Paul, and later John, says the same thing about a reality now. There are certain things that are true right now. That is, we are children of God, loved and saved by Jesus now. But you know, sometimes we don't act that way. We don't love our neighbor as ourselves. We don't um, uh, love, take care of um, ourselves. We don't even love God the way we should love God. And you know, there's some other things too. Sometimes uh, we think about it and Jesus died on the cross for our sins and they're paid for. Our sins are washed away, but we still sin. Uh, the devil... He's conquered by Jesus' death on the cross. He has no power over us, and yet he still tries to make life miserable for Christians and tries to tempt us. And then there's death. Jesus conquered death through his death and resurrection. Death has no power over the people of God, and yet you and I both bury loved ones whose bodies um, suffer and die, and um, we see death all around us. And so even though now we have the certainty of the, the forgiveness of sin, our salvation, um, conquering the devil and conquering death, we still feel the impact of those things in our lives. We're not completely free of them yet. And that happens when Jesus returns. And so here's the second picture. When Jesus returns, it's kind of like the full picture. Instead of knowing that Jesus is here present with us, you're going to see him face to face. Instead of uh, uh, just knowing that you're a child of God, you're going to live completely like a child of God without sin. Uh, there will be no more devil. Uh, the book of Revelation says that Jesus is going to put an end to him once and for all. And so it's a wonderful picture of God's big picture of his immeasurable love for us in Jesus. But we are in a now, not yet type of existence right now and so even though the, these things are certain and sure we don't experience them fully until Jesus returns so um, 
think about that. You know, sometimes people think that you become a Christian or follow Jesus and everything's going to be perfect. That's not quite uh, the way it works out. When Jesus returns, everything will be made new. And we'll talk about that challenge of suffering uh, a bit tomorrow as we wrap up the big picture. But now we're going to switch over to announcements. Okay, first of all, where in the world is Mr. Van? Kind of tracking him down. Um, looks like he moved to warmer weather. Uh, you know Mr. Van always likes to do rockets, uh, and it looks like he's got a rocket behind him, and I see an American flag. See if you can figure out or guess where Mr. Van is in the world today, and I want you to share that with your teacher in your first class. If you're on Seesaw, you can put it in one of your responses to your teacher. Say, hey, I saw Mr. Van this morning. He was in blankety-blank place, um, wherever that might be. Uh, whatever state, whatever country, whatever location, uh, let your teacher know. All right, other announcements. Uh, Thursday, uh, May 7th, here we are. It's a national day of prayer. It's a special day where we uh, celebrate uh, the gift of prayer and going to the Lord to pray for many different things, our country, our families, our school, our community, especially during this coronavirus. Please take some time today and, and pray. Uh, online book fair comes to a close today, so uh, check out your books uh, for the last day. May 10th, again, Mother's Day. If you haven't started your cards, get working on them. And, uh, of course, the talent show, um, the recorded performances need to be submitted by May 13th. And let's close with a word of prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil. That all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Have a great day in the Lord, everyone. Take care.